Hi guys, and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So the other day I released a video entitled How to Play Heavy Tanks, and that got me thinking, <clears throat> maybe I should do a video on how to play heavy auto-loading tanks, because anybody who watches my streams or sort of knows me in any way, shape or form, you will know that I absolutely love the likes of the M6 Yo, the T57 Heavy and the AMX 50B. I think they're just fantastic tanks. And I also think once you get used to them, they're some of the easiest heavies to play at tier 10. So that got me thinking, well, maybe I should do a little video on how to play auto loading heavies. Here we are in the Yo out on Oasis Palms. Now, as I said, I absolutely love the Yo. I think it's a fantastic tank. Some people I've seen recently saying it's trash. You know, it's a terrible tank, it's awful. And I just totally disagree with that. And the reason I disagree with that is because played in the correct manner, I think all these auto-loading heavies at tier 10, be it the 57 Heavy, the Yo, or the 50B, and to an extent the Clown Wagon, can easily dish out 3,000 plus damage per game. Okay, that's average. I mean, you're not always gonna dish out 3,000, but if you play the tank correctly and you know what the upsides and the downsides are to playing an auto-loading heavy, then you will quickly discover that they are damage machines. Now, already I've only done 578 in this game. I have got a little bit of assistance damage what we're tracking the E5. I did struggle with the E5. That's mainly my fault because basically what I've been doing recently is dropping the calibrated shells and using other equipment for various reasons. I mean, <clears throat> I like to experiment, okay? Now, having calibrated shells, yes, okay, it does give you that extra push, but I'm also trying to get that extra reload, so I'm jumping and changing between the two. Not only that, when you drop the calibrated shells, you're basically being forced to improve your overall aim because those penetrating shots are a little bit harder. And the name of the game is, you know, if you can get your accuracy up, if you can get those penetrating shots to land, then, you know, you're on a winner, basically. So this is just a teaser tester game. I mean, as you can see here, we've done 2.4K, we've bounced nothing, we've taken one kill, it's, it's two against three now. So we're pretty much in the bag in this game. I'm gonna push onto the E50M, we're gonna take him out, bless him. Sorry, E50M, AMX 50B. And then I'm gonna swing around and play against the object. And as I said, if you play the auto-loading heavies, or, you know, well enough, you'll easily get 3K, and there we go, 3.3K, we bounce 640, we take three kills. I think we get a third class or a second class for our troubles, nothing major, nothing, nothing to set the world on fire, but I don't care about that. Um, let me just go back. So yeah, it's a second class. 3.3k, damage 5, destroyed X amount. When I look at, uh, you know, we get quite a few credits, but when I look at the statistics, okay, you can see here that I spotted two enemies, um, only hit, I, I, I dropped two shots, that was on the E5 of 5, 19, damage 5 of 3, and I did a little bit of assistance damage, nothing to set the world on fire, but I enjoyed playing it. So what we're now gonna do, I'm gonna jump into a T57 Heavy on Vineyards, and I'm gonna show you that, you know, there are little tricks and ways and what force into playing these auto-loading heavies. That once you know the basics of them, believe me, you will have one heck of a time. This is me and the T57 Heavy on Vineyards. Now the T57 Heavy is another one of those super duper auto-loading heavies in tier 10. And I absolutely love the T57 Heavy. I think it's a fantastic tank. Now, when it comes to vineyards and this spawn, I like to go to this position. The reason I like to go to this position is because you've basically got some cover. The T57 Heavy is a haul down tank, funnily enough. It's got that oscillating turret, so it's got a little bit of decent uh, gun depression, but it has got a thinnish hull, and you've got to be careful of the turret cheeks. But I like this position because it gives me an overall view of the map, be that the left side or the right side. And as you can see, we've already done 800 odd damage here. We blocked 400. Why? Because as I said, the 57 Heavy is a great haul down tank. Now, from the other side of the map where you can see where that uh, Conway is, etc., etc., that big boulder protects me. 
To the right side, I know I've got a VK72 and an E100. Now the trick to playing auto-loading heavies is to have somewhere safe when you do that lengthy reload, okay, between the magazines. If you don't have a safe place, then you are incredibly vulnerable because the load time is pretty, pretty long. The reason for that is because you're going to be dishing out a lot of DPM with those three shells once your magazine is fully loaded. And that is the trick to playing these auto-loading heavies. You can frontline them. I am, for all intents and purposes, here on the front line. I'm a little bit sort of in the middle. I'm not pushing heavily in, not yet, because I am not that strong as a tank. I have a strong gun, I have good mobility, but I don't have the strongest of armor. So I've got to make sure that I'm nurturing my tank. There we go, we bounce another one this time from the VK. Now we've only got three tanks left. Two heavies, the E100 and the VK to my right, and the WZ to my left. The WZ is gonna go down now, and he does. That means we can now push these heavies. Like I said, I'm not gonna push until necessary. Now we're pushing, and I'm, I haven't fully loaded because I know I can take this VK with the two shells I've got left. There goes number one, here comes number two, boom. And like I said earlier, you can knock out 3,000 damage quite easily in one of these auto-loading heavies. There we do 3.2K. We have four non we, we we block 1,000 damage, we only destroy one tank. We get a nice little medal. I mean, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. We get some decent credits and, <clears throat> you know, we held a position. And this is the thing that I keep telling people, know your tanks and know your maps. Now on Vineyards, I looked at their lineup. I anticipated that their super heavies, the VK and the E100, were going to go to the city and the other tanks were probably going to go around the A cap area or to the cap in the middle from that spawn. That means I can take my little haul down heavy tank to that boulder. I can therefore get shots into the middle area. I can get shots over to the A cap and I can get shots into the city if necessary. And as you can see, we just sat there and howled a line. I always had protection for when I needed to reload and therefore I was never really in much danger. I was able to control the map and that is the thing. Know your tanks and know your maps. Now we're going to jump into another M6 Yo game, this is the last one, and this time it's going to be on my own ruins, so let's have a look at that one. Here we are, as promised, in the M6 Yo on my own ruins, and it's a supremacy game, but I, I very rarely cap. What I'm going to do, I can see that they've got all their mediums and lights, and they've got a TD over on the right hand side towards the C cap, which is fine. I'm going to push up, I'm going to hopefully try and get shots into the T100, unfortunately no, because he manages to get away from me. I now make a slight error. I'm thinking they're all going to be there. I didn't realize the Fosh was going to be there. So I'll get one into him. He returns that. Put another one into him. Can I track him? I tried to track him. Doesn't work. He's going to push me. He's got one shot left. He's not going to wreck me unless he ammo racks me, which is very slim. He does, however, knock me for a thousand damage. And I've only knocked him from 900. That's okay. My reload is faster than his. I'm now reloaded. Now I'm going to track him. Hopefully other people are going to put shots in. They don't. I track him again. And I'm going to track him a third time. He's now a one shot to everybody on the battlefield. I'm going to pull back into cover whilst I reload. I can see behind me that there's a tank. And I'm pretty sure that's the T100. So I'm going to try and get into the dip. Hopefully the T100 can't get shots on me. I'm going to finish off the Fosh. There we go. Still got two loaded. There's the T100. He's going to get one into my rear, and he does, but I'm going to put both my final clips into him, and we do. We're now at 2,271 damage. There's only two tanks left. We're going to fully reload, and then we're going to push onto the Clan Wagon whilst trying to stay in this little dippy area. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to track the Crown Wagon. No, I'm not. I'm only going to critical crack. Now I've tracked him. That allows other players to come in and smack him. I break his track yet again. Pull back to reload. Again, always in a position of safety. I now know the 60TP is focused on the Sheridan. He's not focused on me. I can therefore push up. Let's track him, which we do. Can we track him a third time, a second time? Yes, we do. And perma track him? Yes, we do. And he's taken down. And again, 3.6k. We didn't bounce anything. We take two kills. And again, we're controlling the battle. 
And this is the thing about these auto-loading heavies. They have the ability to control the battle around them. But, and this is vitally important, as I keep saying, know your map, know your tank. If you don't know the map, then you don't know where to sort of stick your tank on that long reload. And this is really important, guys, because you are totally, totally vulnerable at that point. So my my advice for playing the auto-loading heavies is don't rush it. Don't think that you you because you're in a heavy, you've got all these hit points and all this armor. It doesn't work that way. You are incredibly vulnerable when you expend your magazine. So you've got to be slightly on the front line. In fact, in all those games, I was front lining it, but always be aware of your surroundings. Know where you can pull back to for relative safety to reload that magazine. Then once you reload it, then you can unleash hell onto the enemy. And as I say, once you get used to playing the auto-loading heavies, you should be doing, on average, about 3k. That's the potential that these tanks have for the average player, in my opinion. They have the potential for you to knock out 3k if you play them correctly. For the Super Unicums, they've got the potential to knock out 4,000 plus because they're that good. So that's just my take. I've been fooded. That's been my take on the auto-loading heavies with some little basic tips. By all means, comment and like, um, comment and everything below. If you want to, press like or even subscribe. It's up to you. And because I'm going to be interested to see what people have to say. As I said, I absolutely adore these tanks. If anybody has watched my streams, etc., etc., they will know that I love the Yo uh, and I love the 57 Heavy and I even love the AMX 50B. And on occasion, I love the Kranwagen. But guys, you tell me what you think of these tanks. They are going to change ever so slightly. Uh, soon with the next update. I mean, for example, the 50B is going to get a fourth shell. The Yo is going to get uh, that thing that makes the reload a little bit quicker, the same as the FV4005, and some other little bit of tweaks and stuff. But I don't think they're going to change the tanks that massively. In fact, when I played the 50B, once I got used to it, I thought it was a beast of a tank. But only time will tell. So until then, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.